Welcome back. We're moving on to the next part of the World of Warcraft Chronicles, Volume 1. Uh, last time we were talking about Zargeras and when he forced, tricked, lured the Eridar into the Burning Legion. But now we're going to travel back to Azeroth and talk about what's going on with the Keepers. Loken's Betrayal. This picture here is of Keeper Thorim discovers the body of his wife, Sif. So we'll get into that story. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to Sargeras, the last embers of the Pantheon's power clung to life. Although Sargeras had destroyed the Titan's physical forms, Norganon's grand spellwork had preserved their souls. The disembodied Titan spirits hurtled through the Great Dark toward the world of Azeroth and its keepers. There the Pantheon hoped they could locate physical forms to inhabit. If they could not find such vessels, the Titans feared their weakened spirits would soon fade into oblivion. Upon reaching Azeroth, the depleted spirits slammed into the Keepers, who had been crafted by the Pantheon's own hands. The Keepers were immediately overwhelmed as the Titans' powers flared in their minds. They witnessed fragmented memories of distant worlds, of lifetimes never lived and wonders never seen. But just as quickly as the influx of power had come, it dimmed. The Keepers, still retaining their original personalities, puzzled over this strange phenomenon. They knew they had been gifted with a portion of the Pantheon's power, but they were unaware that the last remnants of their beloved makers had been infused in their very bodies. The bewildered servants called out to the Pantheon for answers, but they received no reply. The deep silence troubled the Keepers, and they sank into a long period of confusion and unease. The old god yogg imprisoned beneath Olduar, sensed these fluctuating emotions. In the eons since the ordering of Azeroth, a sharp awareness had begun to stir within the entity. yogg had devised a plan to weaken its jailers and escape imprisonment. It would corrupt the Forge of Wills, tainting its creation matrix with a strange malady known as the Curse of Flesh. Any titan forged created by the machine thereafter would fall victim to this affliction. Some would even spread it to previous generations of titan forged. The Curse of Flesh would gradually transform many of these infected servants into mortal beings of flesh and blood, beings who the cunning old god knew could be easily killed. To implement this plan, yogg turned to Keeper Loken. Out of Olduar's guardians, Loken had been the most troubled by the Pantheon silence. yogg assailed the Keeper through fevered dreams, stoking the cold fires of his despair. Yet even in his disturbed state, Loken resisted the whisperings in his mind. Ultimately, his downfall would come from a much subtler place. As Loken drifted deeper and deeper into despair, he sought comfort from a Vrykul named Sif, the mate of his brother, Keeper Thorum. Loken often met with Sif in private, telling her of his darkest fears. In time, a forbidden love blossomed between the two Titanforged. yogg latched onto Loken's love for Sif and twisted it into a dangerous obsession. The relationship quickly soured due to Loken's increasingly compulsive behavior. More and more he talked of openly professing their love for each other, an act that Sif vehemently opposed. She knew that if Thorm discovered the affair, it would shatter the Keeper's unity. Ultimately, she broke all ties with Loken, demanding that he leave her in peace. The thought of losing Sif drove Loken to madness. In a fit of anger and jealousy, he lashed out at his love and killed her. Though racked by guilt, he could not bring himself to tell Thorum of what he had done. Loken scrambled for a way to cover up Sif's death. It was in this time of need that her spirit appeared before his eyes. Much to Loken's surprise, this visage of Sif forgave him. 
she also warned him of the need to act with haste, lest Thorm learn the truth. If he did, the Titanforged would descend into civil war, and every pledge Loken had made to the Pantheon would be broken. Sif's suggestion struck Loken as devious, a characteristic he had never known her to possess. He sensed something strange in her spirit, an unseen darkness, subtle yet discernible. But Loken's fear clouded his, his judgment, and he pushed away his doubts. On Sif's guidance, Loken dragged her corpse into the frigid wastes of the storm peaks. He informed Thorin of his wife's demise and convinced the Keeper that Arngrim, king of the ice giants, was to blame. The grief-stricken Thorim unleashed his unbridled fury, slaying Arngrim and many of his followers. This event ignited a catastrophic war between Thorim's storm giants and Arngrim's ice giants. Sif's spirit continued aiding Loken as the conflict raged. Her guidance became ever more extreme and worrisome, but Loken forgot, but Loken forged ahead nonetheless. She convinced him to build an army of his own using the Forge of Wills, one large enough to protect Olduar from the depredations of the warring giants. Loken was even persuaded to punish his brother for starting the war. He berated Thorum for letting anger rule his emotions and for creating such a terrible rift between the Titanforged. Loken further admonished his brother, claiming that Sif herself would look upon him in shame if she could only see the things he had done in her name. Ugh. This bitter condemnation threw Thorum into a deep depression. Overcome with regret, he abandoned Olduar and languished in solitude. With Thorim in isolation, Loken used his newly forged army to overwhelm the giants and end their conflict. All those who resisted his will were locked away in stasis chambers. But as these battles progressed, Loken noticed something unsettling among his warriors. A dark affliction suffused their spirits. Loken called out to Sif again for advice, but this time she remained silent. Dread overtook the keeper as he realized that her spirit had not existed at all. She was an illusion created by yogg -Saron. Though Loken did not know it, the false spirit of Sif had also tainted the Forge of Wills while the Keeper was creating his army. yogg -Saron's curse of flesh had taken root in the heart of the machine's creation matrix. Loken had, in his selfishness, allowed yogg -Saron to play him as an unwitting pawn. This discovery shattered the last vestiges of Loken's noble heart. He became obsessed with keeping his transgressions a secret, even if it meant embracing the power of yogg -Saron. With such might at his command, he knew he could defeat the remaining keepers and destroy all evidence of his wrongdoing. The Sealing of the Halls of Valor in order to defeat the other keepers, Loken realized that he would first have to neutralize Odin and his mighty Velarjar army. But a direct attack against their floating citadel, the Halls of Valor, would be impossible. Instead, Loken took a more insidious approach. He reached out to Odin's adopted daughter, the Valkyr, Helia. For millennia, Helia had dutifully followed Odin's commands, transporting the spirits of slain Vrykul to the Halls of Valor, Yet even while she did so, Helia nursed the cold anger that stirred in her phantom heart. She never forgave Odin for turning her into a Valkyr against her will. Helia dreamed of a day when she might avenge what had been done to her and the others who had been transformed into Valkyr. I'm kind of on her side in this one. Loken called out to Helia and played on her simmering anger and feelings of betrayal. He promised he would break the chains of servitude that bound her to follow Odin's will. In exchange, she would seal off the Halls of Valor from the world forever. Thereafter, Helia could usurp Odin's role as the caretaker of all Vrykul spirits. Enticed by this chance to sate her appetite for revenge, she agreed to Loken's plans. After Loken had restored her free will, Helia called on the same powers she had used to secure the elemental plane in ages past. Because remember, she was the one who, together with Keeper Ra, had devised the prison 
for the elemental lords to be put into Ragnaros and Mimiron. No, not Mimiron. <laughs> Ragnaros, Therizane, Alakir, and Neptulon. She's the one who, together with Ra, made that place. So she did a similar thing with the Halls of Valor. Um, she bent the latent arcane energies swirling around Azeroth to her command, sealing off the Halls of Valor and the inhabitants within. Odin and his mighty Valarjar struggled desperately to escape their floating citadel, but they could not break the impregnable barrier Helia had created. There the Valarjar and the Keeper would remain, trapped within the golden corridors of the Halls of Valor for ages to come. Helia, now liberated from her life of servitude, forged a new home for herself and the other Valkyr. She created this enchanted refuge far below the Halls of Valor, binding it to Azeroth's great seas. The ocean mists soon coiled up to envelop Helia's domain and shroud it from sight. Known as Helheim, this realm would become the final destination for many Vrykul spirits after death. Not all Valkyr continued to follow Helia after Odin's defeat. Some of these spectral beings disappeared into the Shadowlands. The few who still retained a glimmer of nobility in their souls dedicated themselves to watching over the physical world. From within the Shadowlands, these Valkyr would at times guide the dead back to the land of the living. The darkness that had long festered in Helia's heart transformed Helheim into a place of nightmare and shadow. The souls of dead Rykul who arrived there soon found themselves turned into vengeful, wraith-like beings. These cursed spirits were known as the Kvaldir. They became one with the ocean mists, bound to the ebb and flow of the tides. The eternal fire of malice and anguish that burned in their souls would drive the Cavaldir to raid and plunder the shores of Kalimdor for all eternity. The Fall of the Keepers With Odin and his Valarjar sealed away, Loken returned to Olduar. He believed he now had ample time to orchestrate the downfall of the other Keepers, yet he soon discovered a new threat to his plans. Mimiron had begun investigating strange anomalies in Loken's new Titan Forged. The brilliant Keeper suspected that some malfunction within the Forge of Wills was to blame for the impurities he had observed. Be before he could pursue his theory, Loken sabotaged the Keeper's workshop, killing Mimiron in what appeared to be a tragic accident. Mimiron, however, was not completely dead. Mimiron's faithful mechanomes discovered that their master's spirit lived on. They scrambled to build a giant mechanized body to house the Keeper's fading soul. This heroic act saved Mimiron, but he was never the same again. His brush with death had broken his mind. He secluded himself in Olduar's vast workshops, spending his days lost in the inner workings of his clockwork inventions. Knowing Mimiron's fate would raise suspicions among the other keepers, Loken dispatched his army to neutralize his remaining brethren. First, Loken confronted Freya at her verdant domain within the Storm Peaks, the Temple of Life. Battle raged between the two keepers and their followers, sundering the temple and bleeding its precious life energies dry. Freya struggled valiantly against her foes, but she ultimately fell to Loken and the shadowy powers yogg saron had granted him. Yogg-Saron itself seized on Freya's weakened state, enthralling her spirit. The old god compelled the broken Freya to withdraw into the halls of Olduar. There she would spend her forlorn days tending to a sprawling garden at the heart of the fortress. As Loken confronted Freya, another group of his titan forged waged war on the mighty keeper Hodir within his lair, the Temple of Winter. Two fire giants named Ignis and Vulcan led the assault. They enveloped the temple in blistering infernos, sapping Hodir's wintry strength and decimating his icy followers. Loken later arrived to subdue Hodir directly, a task he completed with ease. Just as it had done with Freya, yogg warped Hodir's mind. 
the entity forced the keeper to retreat into a frigid chamber within Olduar, where he would remain in seclusion for millennia. Two of the remaining keepers, Tyr and Arcades, did not fall victim to Loken's schemes. Tyr had long suspected that a darkness was growing within the fallen keeper, a suspicion that was confirmed when he witnessed Loken's attack on Hodir. Yet Tyr was in no position to confront Loken directly. Throngs of the Fallen Keeper's loyal Titanforged stalked the storm peaks and the halls of Ulduar, knowing he stood little chance against this array, against this army. Tyr took Arcades and their close friend, a Titanforged giantess named Ironia, to the outskirts of the storm peaks. Among the icy cliffs, they waited and watched Loken's schemes unfold, planning their next move. Loken dispatched his forces to hunt down Tyr and his companions. These Titanforged scoured the mountains and caves of the Storm Peaks, but they never found their prey. Believing that Tyr and his allies had fled the region, Loken asserted sole dominion over Olduar. He altered the machineries within the fortress and used them to anoint himself the new prime designate of Azeroth. He also disabled the tainted Forge of Wills and banished many of his servants to the Storm Peaks. Thereafter, he sealed off the sprawling fortress of Olduar. Loken languished in regret within Olduar's silent halls. Despite everything he had accomplished, he was ever fearful that the Pantheon or their appointed watcher, Algalon, would one day return to Azeroth. If that happened, they would discover Loken's horrific crimes and punish him. But in truth, the greatest threat was right beneath Loken's feet. No longer under the watchful eyes of Olduar's jailers, yogg began to stir, working to free itself from its impregnable prison. The Vanishing of Ra As he dealt with the other keepers, Loken always expected that Ra would emerge from the southern reaches of Kalimdor to investigate the goings-on in Olduar, but much to Loken's surprise, the High Keeper remained silent throughout these world-altering events. Overcome with curiosity, Loken dispatched a co contingent of his army to the distant bastion of Oldham to investigate Ra's activities. These Titanforged agents never found the missing High Keeper, but they did learn from the local Mogu, Tolvir, and Anubisaths that Ra had mysteriously vanished these meetings would have a lasting impact. In journeying south, Loken's forces had unwittingly spread the curse of flesh throughout many of Ra's faithful servants. So this explains how, even though they were so far away from the Forge of Wills, they also suffered from the curse of flesh over time. Unbeknownst to Loken and the Titan Forged, Ra had experienced a revelation one so terrible that it had driven him into seclusion. When the Pantheon's power and memories had been infused in the Keepers, Ra had reeled in confusion much like his siblings. Over time, however, he had concluded that this event was more than just an anomaly. The influx of power was the last remnant of the Pantheon's spirits. Ra struggled to accept the fact that the Pantheon had fallen, he extracted the lingering power of Amonthul from himself and carefully stored it in a mountain vault near what would become known as the Vale of Eternal Blossoms. There the High Keeper hoped to preserve what little was left of his beloved Titan creator. Ra then retreated into the catacombs beneath the land to meditate on what he had learned. With the High Keeper gone, his loyal Titanforged developed new cultures, wholly distinct from those of their northern kin. Most of the Tolvir congregated around Oldham, making the fortress their home. To the west, the Anubisoths continued their sacred charge of watching over the prison of Cthun. Similarly, the Mogu remained in the east, guarding the Titanforged vaults and machineries buried beneath the earth. Okay, I think this is a good place to pause because it goes on to a different subject entirely. So we could break it up like this. Uh, thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.